hey, welcome everyone. Um, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Wiki. I'm co-founder of Coda. I'm always the person who is doing the technical stuff and leading edge implementation. So anytime someone comes with our with their new technology, I'm the person who is trying to research that, how it works, and how can we make it possible. Um, on GitHub, Farcaster and X as Wikival, so you can find me there. And the question is maybe what's Coda? It's a generative NFT marketplace on Polkadot and EVM ecosystem. It's technology agnostic, so even if you have JavaScript web assembly or your own very exotic technology, we can make it work, most probably. We are bounty-based, so we are bringing dev talent to the ecosystem. So we have 130 plus contributors, more than 600 stars, and already 350 plus forks. And what's the state of NFTs in the Polkadot ecosystem? There are basically two ways for the de for the new developer in the ecosystem. He can choose or she the classic way of smart contracts. So even if you choose for EVM or WebAssembly, it's like well known and widely used in the Ethereum or in other ecosystems. You just use Solidity, take the library, take the framework, and boom, you have a smart contract. Or you can have the darker path. You can use the native NFTs or on-chain palettes in the Polkadot ecosystem. They are minted on-chain. The logic is on-chain. You don't need any smart contracts. You just need to call a few RPC calls. It's more efficient. And maybe you can ask less flexible. We will see. So the question is why Asset Hub then? It's a system chain, as you heard from the speaker before. It's a system chain with DOT. XCM NFTs will be compatible with the XCM v4, v5. There are atomic swaps, so you can directly swap NFT to other NFT directly on chain without any lo other logic involved. And it's NFT palette with all the features. So your question may be like, what are those features? And I was researching like the EVM ecosystem for the last few years. And Asset Hub in general offers like multiple NFC uh, errors. RFCs in one box. So it's 721 and others and others and others in one protocol. And it's amazing because you don't need to came up, you don't need to study that, how this work, how to correctly implement that. You have directly that into the on-chain logic. And for example, you can flexibly set custom metadata for collection and items. So something you usually do in the in the smart contract or on the NFT with 721. You set custom metadata so it's visible on OpenSea, so people can directly grab it and it's visible. It's directly built in into, the, into that. You can also set custom attributes on chain so you can make trades or other sort of ranking. It's possible. Plus, you can specify the mint setting so who can mint it, like if it's public, if it's private, if it's gated by other token, it's also possible. You can specify like from which block to which block you can like mint the NFTs if it's free, if it's paid. So yeah, sky is the limit. And th that's why we decided to create the generative art on on the platform. So what's generative art? Many times people ask me, so which AI do you use? And we are like, we don't use AI. We have artists that they are not creating like pictures or drawing PFPs. They are code. And this code is basically creating like very nice art, which is kind of complex. It's iterative, it's modular. And the best thing is that each, each art is unique and one of the kind. So you don't, need, you don't need to worry that some other person will get the same image. And this art or this code is usually stored on decentralized networks, such as RE or IPFS or any other thing. And parameters for, for the art varies from platform to platform. So even if you deploy this code on other platform, you won't get the same output. And so qu your question may be like, what's the typical generative art? And if you remember the early 2000s, it was a like, huge internet bubble. So this early, early like websites were just uh, small HTML files that has like few lines of JavaScript. And with this art, it's the same. It's basically like HTML with the, that the contains canvas and using like JavaScript library 
for example, like P5GS, you can create like beautiful art. So for example, I made this hack on the on the hackathon, so I was able to feed like very simple generative art in one tweet or one cast. So you see in a few lines of code, I was able to draw a square, like literally a few lines. And so at, at under the hood, Genart is basically a mini web. Like you have P5GS playground to, in the production. It's very fast to iterate on, on this approach, but what we find out, the IPFS is ma very slow many times, so user has to wait for the iteration. So you see anytime I click on the button, it takes a while to regenerate the, the new iteration. And you have to optimize this UX. You need to cache the data and so on. So it takes a, it takes a lot of dev effort to make it work. And it's not the same across all the platforms. You would think that the web is standardized, but now Chrome and Firefox behaves differently. So it's not that easy. Then you have other approach. So you can use GenArt from the, directly from the smart contract. So even if you heard about Uniswap V3, it was an NFT that was a like, representation of your liquidity. So you have basically a smart contract that renders this image. This is basically on-chain on -chain image. It's like SVG directly from the smart contracts. And you use the live data to render the art. But to make this work, you need to make like a lot of RPC calls. So, you know, the RPC call bills aren't the lowest one. It's not that cheap. Um, it's hard to make image previews, so it breaks this user experience. So user doesn't see like it directly, and it's hard to iterate on the data. So if you make a mistake in this render on the rendering of from the smart contract, well, you cannot do nothing, right? Because contracts by default aren't upgradable. And then what you can do in Polkadot ecosystem, which like we hacked, is this hybrid approach uh, of WebAssembly. So you have embedded, you can embed the art, like on-chain art, into the smart contract itself. So you can render it directly from the smart contract. And if the size allows, for example, on Aleph Zero, it was possible, uh, you can store this data in the smart contract itself. If not, you can store it the rest on the IPFS. But like anyway, it's really easy to cache WebAssembly because your browser does it by default. It's flexible because you can code this art in C++, Rust, or any other language that compiles it in WebAssembly. And there's a lot of languages. So this approach makes more sense. But there is like one, one secret algorithm that no one told you about. And that's it, that artists needs a community. And as this wonderful person said, generative art is nothing without its people. And you may ask, like, where are these people? There is a new social network uh, called uh, Farcaster. And you can organize the community uh, about the particular topic, like such as generative art, or you are into the Polkadot. So you can group these people according to some topics. It's called channels. And it's Web3 native, so you can make token payments, you can make NFT minting, you can make custom UIs. So, for example, anytime someone writes a GM, you have a GM button instead of like. So these custom UIs makes makes things nicer, right? Plus, something you something you have is like a ranking algorithm, so you can see like what's your rank on this particular social network. But like the, the disadvantage is still like it's very early. And it's still sometimes hard to build like infrastructure on the top. But the experience is elevated. So if you want to make onboarding easy for the users, make it via Web3 social networks. It's very easy to use. Many people used like Twitter or Facebook before. So the UI is native. The wallet is already connected. And the best thing, user doesn't need to leave the platform. What it means that onboarding is direct, and you can directly follow up to your app. For example, what you see on the on the image is basically a cast on the dwarf cast that one artist was creating the generative art on our platform. And what you can see that is a special frame that allows you to mint directly from that app. And it's very special. 
And how to make this art social? For example, is that Lou? For example, I've had for head of artist. She tipped me seven Dijon. It's not much, but I was still happy that I was able to directly get the tip from the platform. And you can tip to these people, and it's creating this very nice social vibe. Like we have Web3, you don't need to ask for someone's bank account. You don't need to ask someone's address. It's basically native. She just wrote seven Dijon, and that's it. I got it on my wallet. You can make direct minting of the generative art on the, our pl on the platform or other on-chain actions with just a few clicks without making like ultra hard UIs. It's hard to make. So you may ask, what's this magic UI? It's called a Farcaster frame. And you can imagine that as an interactive iframe built on the open graph. So it's a great presentation layer in general. You can show the content for the user without leaving the app. So as you can see, I can preview the generative art directly from the app. You, I'm just clicking on the buttons directly from the app itself. So I don't need to leave the app. I don't need to go to any other website. I'm just, just clicking in the app, like in the Twitter, something like Solana Blinks. It's, it works. You have direct write layer, so that connected EVM address can perform the transactions without any installing, connecting, and so on and so on. Just you click, mint, and done. And can be leveraged basically for anything, but it has three limits. First, it always has to return the image. Second, the response needs to be faster than five seconds. And the third, there is a very, very, very hacky support for the dot addresses. But we can solve that together. So if you may ask, is there a magic UI for the generative R on Polkadot? Yes, there is. It's called the Coda. And it's had a drop page, which basically showcases you this on-chain data very nicely. You see the drop page. You also see the magic UI. You can generate the previews. We had an interactive iframe. And thanks to the features like the XCM or like batch so transaction batching, something like, yeah, you can live without batching transaction. It's like magic. You can, you can use the native dot for minting, so you don't need to do any magic wrapping or unwrapping as like from ETH. You don't need to wrap ETH to VAT to make something. You just use the dot natively. And plus, it's living on the asset hub, so it has the potential to, to grow. And also, with collecting this generative art, you need to make it like still more social because like when you click on the mint, you pay for the fees and what? That's that's it. That's nothing. So we came up with the profiles to make blockchain more social. And what we found out for building this stuff for more more than four years is that on-chain identity identities are perfect. They are awesome, and for on-chain governance, it makes more sense. But Imagine you onboard artist or any other person to the Polka ecosystem, he or she buys dot, and then you said him, or said him or her, yeah, well, to make an identity, you need to spend 20 dot to make an identity on chain. And it creates sort of barrier, because when you imagine you are buying this generative art for less than $3, and you need to spend 20 plus dot to make your identity, it doesn't make sense, right? So what we created, we created like this off-chain off solution with the tamper-proof tamper -proof data to onboard people. And how we are doing that is basically little old good cryptography. You can use signatures to, make, to ensure that data is not valid. So any, anyway, the developer cannot, if he or she changes the database, you will see, see that, the, that the change wasn't valid. So thanks to the signatures, you can make anything tamper-proof. And the question is, like, how do you get as, uh, funds to the asset hub? We heard that the XCM version 5 will be amazing. We are looking forward to it, to make it like happen. But currently, with the XCM, you can bring funds to the asset hub thanks to the teleportation you heard. But to bring, to bring DOT to asset hub, you teleport it, and you know how to teleport that stuff. You need to go to some UI to take funds, to put it, to sign it, and so on. And it's still hustle. We learned that, that people don't want to teleport things. Like, you can't tell them, like, 
please go to this page and teleport your assets to this other chain so, so you can mint the NFT. People don't know the difference usually between the Polkadot and the Asset Hub. It's hard to explain itself. So we created something called auto teleportation. And when you click for the mint button, you'll get this nice UI which it says like first you need to teleport or bridge your asset to this chain. You don't know it's Asset Hub, but you need to teleport it. So once you teleport it, we'll check that if you had that funds which came to the chain itself. And when the funds came, you can mint the NFT. So in, instead of like going to different pages, bridging assets, and so on, you just make two signatures, and that's it. So it's completely different, like UI or like user experience, as you may as you may done, done before. And also, you don't need to check just Polkadot. You can check other, for example, power chains like Hydrotation. For example, you have liquidity there, and you don't have no liquidity on Polkadot, so we can bring directly liquidity from Hydrotation to, to the asset up. So you have enough balance to pay for the minting. And even if you are not collecting this, this generative drops, you can make something useful in the ecosystem. And that's, that's something called the proof of attendance. So even if you are attending Decoded or any other Polkadot event or, or meeting, you can collect this pop as a social activity. So any, any times I'm on the conference, I'm trying to collect these pops because you can s then meet with someone else later and they said, yeah, yeah, I have this pop. And the pe person said, like, really, show me that. So then you can prove that you met literally five years ago, but he or she doesn't remember. So you can make this pop as a proof. And by the proof, with the pops, you can create meetups around the world. So Anytime you travel, you have this pop, and you can you can claim this pop. So you are creating this stronger community or tribes around your brand. So, for example, currently we have new developers which are building like pop. So you can go to pop.co.art and use code Brussels to mean that this uh, coda decoded pop is very special. I made it. 10 minutes ago, so it's very special. And to, su to sum it up, um, Asset Hub offers amazing solution for NFTs. It's ultimate standard. It has battery included. What else you need? It's perfect for 99% of use cases of NFT there is currently there. Thanks to the native dot and the support of XCM, you can do really wild things. You can call can create NFTs from other chains. You can, yeah, sky is the limit, as they say. And there are many things you can do. And drops with the generative art are like very nice way how to bring people to the ecosystem because they love to talk about the art. Which generation did they get? What colors, colors did they get? If they want to swap with someone else and so on. We see that also that people like, like to change these NFTs. Like same with like Pokemon cards you had 10 years ago, people would love to trade. It's, it's our nature. And sharing this unique art artwork on social networks makes NFTs more social. So for example, artists are also trying to promote their art on other networks such as X or Farcaster. So they have, for example, these artists had also like dropped with the new P5GS and XDL on Coda. And yeah, thank, that's it. Don't forget to follow us on Farcaster. We are slash Coda. You can scan the QR code if you don't have Farcaster. And what are your questions? <laughs>